What is up people and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at getting our own GitHub Action runner running either locally in a Docker container or in a Kubernetes cluster and more importantly getting this to work in environments where there's no Docker such as container D. This is super quick and easy to do but do you know what else is easier? Hitting that like and subscribe button so you can support and help us make more content like this. So without further ado Let's go. So if you take a look at our GitHub repo, I have a GitHub folder and an actions folder with everything related to GitHub actions. And in that folder, I have a self-hosted runner folder where we're going to be taking a look at how to host our own GitHub runner. In here, I have a readme and this is our introduction to GitHub actions with self-hosted runners. What we're going to be doing is taking a look at building our own Kubernetes cluster and then how to run the runner in Docker, as well as deploying it to our Kubernetes cluster. So be sure to check out the link down below to the source code so you can follow along. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a Kubernetes cluster and I'm going to use a utility called Kind. Kind is a lightweight utility that allows you to run throwaway small Kubernetes clusters in Docker containers for testing and the beauty about it is you can create multiple clusters and throw them away when you're done. So the easiest way to do this is to say Kind create cluster, the name of the cluster and I'm going to run Kubernetes 1.28 for this demo. So I go to my terminal, I copy copy paste that command and that will go ahead and create a Kubernetes cluster locally that we can use for testing. And now you can see our cluster is ready to go. If I do kubectl get nodes, we can see we have a one node Kubernetes cluster ready to go. Now if you go to your GitHub page and you add a new runner, it's going to give you some commands that you can run on a server to add a new runner to that server. Those are the install commands. There's also a new way to install a GitHub runner on a Kubernetes cluster using the actions controller and this is something we'll take a look at in a future video. For this video we're simply going to see what it takes to get a runner working in a docker container that I can run locally or in other infrastructure as well as in a Kubernetes cluster as a deployment or a stateful set and I can then scale that up to create more runners if I need. And it's also worth noting some of the security points about running Docker in Docker, because your runner will run inside Docker, and it's going to need Docker inside of that in order to build container images. And to run this method, it requires privileged access. And GitHub also recommends that GitHub runners should not be running on public repositories, and that you should always use your custom action runners and run it in a separate Kubernetes cluster away from production workloads. Now, GitHub also also recommends that you only run these self-hosted runners in private repositories and that it can be dangerous to run it on public repositories. So all things start with a Docker file. If we take a look at our Docker file, we start with a very smaller Debian version and the version of the runner I want. And then what I'm going to take a look at is how to install Docker inside of the container. So we're only going to be installing the Docker CLI inside of our runner image. This is so we can do things like Docker build and docker push. We're not going to run the daemon inside of the container and more on that later. So in my docker file I have a link to how to install docker on Debian. So if we go to that link this is the official documentation for how to install docker and if we scroll down you can see there's installation methods and we're going to be using the apt repository and they show you how to basically add the repo to the OS and then how to install docker. So what I've done is I've simply copied those commands out and into my image. So I do app get update and then you can see I install CA certificates, curl and GNUPG. We're going to need that to install Docker. Here we use curl to download the GPG files and here we add the repository to our OS list and we say app get update and here we do app get install and notice I'm only picking the Docker CE CLI. I'm not installing the entire daemon. So this will give us access to docker run, docker build and docker push commands. Now the rest of the lines I've just commented out so we can take a look at what we have done. So what I'm going to do in my terminal, I'm going to change directory to the location where that docker file is. You can see it right there. And then I'm just going to build that docker container real quick and I'm going to call it github runner latest. So I say docker build, go ahead and build that. So this demonstrates how I've gone ahead and built my Docker file and installed Docker. Now we need to take a look at how do we install a GitHub 
GitHub runner. And now I'll give you a little sneak peek of how I usually test and create these Docker files. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say Docker run. I'm going to run that container image that I just built. So this is basically just Debian with Docker inside it. You can see we have access to the Docker commands. I can say Docker and we got the Docker CLI working. So if I go to my GitHub repo and I go over to settings and then I go to actions runners and then go to new self-hosted runner and here I can pick the OS we're going to pick Linux and notice here they tell you and give you commands on how to install the runner. So since there's no official Docker image for running a GitHub action runner we have to create one ourselves and this is a very neat way to go and grab the commands we need. So just walking through this quickly, it creates a directory and then changes directory to that. Then it goes ahead and uses curl to get the latest tar file for the runner. And there's the version number of the runner that's currently available. And then does a tar to extract the runner. Now inside the runner folder, there's a config.sh and a run.sh. The config.sh allows you to configure the runner basically and provide things like the runner label, the runner name and things like that and any tags you want to add to it. The runner also takes a URL if you want to add this runner to a repo or to an organization. And then you can also see it takes in a token. This is a short list token that is used to append a runner so keep them secret. This token will expire after some time and can only be used temporarily. Now in our case I'm going to use a GitHub personal access token that has a little bit more rights and I'm going to make an API call to GitHub to get this temporary token on the fly. So this allows us to scale our runners if we want to add more runners. And then to start up the runner all we need to do is say .run.sh to start it up. So what we need to do is take all of these things that we've just learned and go ahead and put this in our docker file. So to test this what we can do is copy these commands and go to our terminal and then just paste the commands in our terminal to test it out. So the first command is to create a directory. Second one is to use curl to download the runner files. Let's go ahead and run that. Then we go ahead and untar it. That'll extract all the files. We do ls. We can see the files on our here. There's the config.sh and the run.sh that we needed. The bin directory has all the binaries for the runner. The next lines you can see here is to configure the runner and to run the run.sh. So let's go ahead and grab that command. Go ahead and paste that and now you should see a few things must not run with sudo. So you'll notice because we have a very slim docker file, our docker file is using bookworm slim, it doesn't have all the dependencies required to get this runner working. So we're going to need to use apt-get install and install a couple of things. First thing we're going to need is sudo and jq because we're going to be also working with json. So the first issue we have is that we must not run with sudo. We're using the root user which we shouldn't be using. So what I've done is just user add, created a new user called github, give him access to sudo and then I switch user to that github user and notice when I run config.sh now I get this message saying that we need to install dependencies because we don't have .NET Core 6 which is one of the dependencies the runners use and to install that I need to run this in the bin directory this install dependencies.sh so this gives you a little bit of an idea about how I go ahead to construct my Docker file. So we'll need to take all these commands that we've just done and add that to our Docker file. Now, if we take a look at our Docker file, we've gone ahead and installed Docker CLI. So the next one here is to install the GitHub Action Runner. So for that, we're gonna need a few commands. App get update, app get install sudo and jq. jq is needed to make an API call to get the access token to register the runner. Then what we're gonna do is say another run command, user add to add the the github user that I've shown earlier and to add that user to the sudo as group and then I switch to that user and then what I'm going to do is say work directory is github action runner I'm going to run the curl command to get the release of the runner that we want so that's the tar file we're going to go ahead and download it and then we're going to run this script that github actions has told us to run to install the dependencies that's needed this will install dotnet core 6 then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give github action ownership on the correct file so that it can run my entry point. I'll take a look at the entry point in a second, but that's going to be used to start up our runner. Then we just set a working directory for the runner and we start it up by calling our entry point. Now the entry point is a very simple script that is used to run that config.sh that we saw earlier, but also to do one extra thing because that config.sh token that's passed in over here can expire. We need to actually make an API call using a personal access token. 
token. So at the top here, I've got a registration URL. I'm just going to make a call to that and then get the token out of it. And that's why we need JQ. So we're going to read the response out of that and get a runner token. And then we call the config.sh. And this is where you can customize your runner. You can give your runner any name and then there's the token you pass and you can give your runner any labels you want. You can add it to an organization or to a repository, give it the working directory. It will do all the checkout and build stuff inside there. And I want an unintended configuration as well as replace the runner if it's already running. Now I'm just going to use the host name as a runner. So when I run in Kubernetes, this will become the pod name. And then what I'm going to do some extra things here, I'm going to trap some exit signals. So when the pod or the container dies, it'll automatically go ahead and run the config.sh to remove that runner. So it'll automatically remove itself from GitHub action. If the container dies, or if we stop the container, or if we scale down our pods. And then the last step is to just go ahead and run the run.sh to start the runner up. So now that our Docker file is ready, I can go ahead and exit out of this runner. I no longer need that anymore. I can go ahead and do Docker build to get that runner rebuilt. And while that's building, I can show you how to run the container. So that's very simple. Say Docker run, we're going to pass in a GitHub personal access token that has capability to register runners. And then we can also say GitHub owner. This is the owner of my repo because I'm going to add it to my repository, not to an organization. Here's my GitHub repository I'm going to be adding it to, and I'm going to run my GitHub runner image. So I go ahead and copy this and I'm going to go ahead and paste it to the terminal. I'll fill out the runner token and I'll run it. So now I've gone ahead and run that and we can see it's authenticated, connected to GitHub. It's added the runner and it's ready to go. And if I go over to my runners back on my repo, you can see that my runner is now here and it's idling. So it's all good. Now to get this runner working on Kubernetes, all we need to do is wrap this in a YAML file for Kubernetes. And you've noticed that we don't have a Docker daemon installed, only the CLI. Now to get access to a daemon, what we're going to do is in our Kubernetes YAML file, we're going to run one pod with one container, which has our container that we've just done. And we're going to run a sidecar container with Docker in Docker. This is the dinned image that allows Docker to run inside of a container. That dinned container is going to expose an address. So we'll tell our runner where the Docker address is. So our runner container will use the dint container to build images. Now to walk through that, if we take a look at my GitHub repo, in my GitHub Action self-hosted runners folder, I have a kubernetes.yaml. And let's take a look at that YAML. So at the moment, this is just a deployment. If you wanted state, you could change this to a stateful set and use PVCs to mount your folders. That'll allow you to do things like cache the Docker images. If the runner dies, it'll still have a cache available. If you don't care about that sort of thing, you can just use a deployment. So here I say replica one, you can actually scale this up. Remember the entry point will go and fetch a new registration token. So you can scale this deployment as well to add more runners if you want. Then here we have our container, GitHub runner. I'm going to say image pool policy never because I'm going to use a local kind image. So I'm not going to push this image to a registry. And here are some environment variables that you saw earlier. I'm going to create a secret. And basically in that secret, I have the GitHub owner, I have the GitHub repository, and I have the personal access token. These are the same things we used in our Docker run command. A few extra things we need is we need a Docker host. So this is a supported Docker variable that Docker suggests to use to point to a host that's outside of the host where you're running. Because our Docker container does not have access to Docker, we're going to set this Docker host and point it to local host because this points to another container in the same pod, which exposes this port. We're going to create some volume mounts as well so that our sidecar Docker container, the dinned image, also has access to the source code. And that is pretty much it. So if we go back to our readme file, it has the steps on how to deploy to Kubernetes. We're going to load the image that we've just built into kind. So I'm going to say kind load Docker image. I'm just going to load that into my kind cluster so that it's available in my Kubernetes cluster to use. And then I'm simply going to follow my own guide. I'm going to say create a new namespace called GitHub. Go ahead and create that. Then I'm going to say create that secret that I just mentioned, which holds my personal access token. So I go ahead and copy this and I'll fill out this token. And then the last step is just to simply apply the Kubernetes YAML file. I'll go ahead and run that, that'll apply it. And if I run kubectl in the GitHub namespace get pods, we can see our runner is coming up. And notice the name of the pod. This will be the name of the GitHub runner. And have a look there. If we go back to our runners in our GitHub repo, there is the pod right there. It's been added to GitHub. If I wanted to scale and I needed more runners, I can say get deploy, get the name of the deployment, and then run the kubectl scale deploy command. Go ahead and scale up to three runners. 
and give it some time and you'll notice more runners are coming up and after a few seconds they're all idle and they're ready to go and to test that if we take a look at my github repo i have in the github workflows folder i have a self-hosted runner.yaml which is a very basic yaml file to show how i'm going to do docker build and you can see here in my on my repo under actions i have that one here it's gone ahead and built and you can see it has done a docker build on a python container which is successful so this shows you how you can get a docker build environment in a kubernetes cluster where you don't have access to docker as i've just done in a kind cluster where there's no docker installed so hopefully this video has helped you get your github action runners working in kubernetes in environments where docker is not even installed let me know what other sort of ci cd videos you'd like to see and if you like the video be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when i upload next and if you want to support the channel even further be sure to check the patreon link down below or hit the join button to become a youtube member and as always thanks for watching and until next time peace